what is up youtube family so today i'm going to show you is how to make money with expire listing so for those of you new to the channel um be sure to boom smash that subscribe button basically i will teach you guys how to make 10 to 100 thousand per month wholesaling houses completely virtual so for those of you who don't know who i am my name is kong also known as king kong i've been in the real estate game for the last past 12 years been wholesaling completely virtual for about five and a half years almost six years now so when i first started i got into the whole like the whole fix and flip game did that for about four and a half years and it was a nightmare you know buying the property dealing with the cities the contractor getting the permit it was so much headache so much stress and i i got to the point where i almost lost everything got 1.5 million dollar tied up and almost lost it all that's when i discovered wholesaling found a seller put negotiate with her put the property in a contract found the buyer in two days sold a piece of paper and made $28,000 in 15 days. That was like an aha moment to me. I was like, dude, I didn't have to buy the property. I didn't have to fix it up. I didn't have to do any of this. No money. It only cost me $250 as an earnest money deposit to make 28,000. So I shut down my fix and flip operation, went all into wholesaling. And now I have a team of seven VAs that run the whole entire wholesaling operations. And we do about six figure a month. And I only spent one hour on it that's the best part and that's why i love wholesaling so much and regardless of whatever market condition we're in whether we're up down sideways zigzag it doesn't matter you can wholesale any day anytime any market because with wholesaling all we're doing is that we're being we're the middleman so if the top of the market if the property's worth hundred thousand, we just need to get under contract right at a steep discount and just flip the contract to somebody else for a profit so my average wholesale deal is 20 to 25k per pop per per deal but in this video i'm going to show you how to make money off of expire listing okay so if you enjoy this and if it does add value to you then please show your boy king kong some love boom smash that thumbs up and let's rock and roll baby now if you haven't followed me on you know twitter ig instagram thread TikTok, anywhere just go to real king kong and uh hit me up on there if you have any question you want to uh, text me directly to one 206 so let's rock and roll so expired listing when i first got into the whole real estate game expired listing is when it's where i get majority of my deal from and let me explain what expired listing is for those of you who don't know what that is. So hold on a second. Uh, hold on, hold on a second. So expired listing are basically is property that the seller went with an agent, put it on the market, but for whatever reason, they couldn't sell the property. All right. And then they end up having to take it off the market. So the listing went expired. So it took off the market and that's where you come in all right and that's where we target because they raised their hand they put the property on the market they wanted to sell right it's not like you're cold calling someone that you don't even know if they want to sell or not sell or even if they have a property to sell or not these are people that put the property up and now they can't sell for whatever reason you're contacting them now it all comes down to is how do you position yourself what do you say to them boom to make it so it's like music to the ear but before I break that down, then let's talk about how do you get access to expired listing. Expired listing guys are gold mine. So to get access, so to get access to expired listing, you gotta network with a realtor. And how you find these realtors, you do not want to reach out to someone that are very experienced. They've been in the go they've been in the game for a long time. It's not gonna work. Typically, you want to find a realtor that just got their license. They're just as hungry as you are. So typically, you want to join the local REIA, R-E-I-A. That's where you're able to find these realtors, all right? Because when they go there, they basically expose themselves to wholesaler, investor, flippers, contractors, right? So they understand where you're coming from. So they will be more likely to get you access to the MOS. But you gotta understand there's never something for nothing. So when you come to them, don't approach to the, don't be the one that's like, hey, can you give me access to the MLS, right? You gotta build relationship. And to them, it's like, what is in it for me, okay? 
So if you can get direct access to the MOS, it's great. But if they won't give you access, then you can tell them, hey, what if you send me all the expired listing? But before I get into that, there's just so much stuff involved. So I got to really think of all the nitty gritty of like what I was doing when I first started out. Like this is 12 years ago. So when you approach them, just say, hey, listen, I'm a wholesaler. I don't have my license, but I would love to build a relationship with you and how we can work together and make money together. I would love to be able to, you know, provide you with value. So here's what I do. I actually, you know, we sent out a lot of, we spent money marketing, trying to find these seller. And majority, and you know, majority of these seller, they're not willing to sell it at a discount. So what if I sent all those leads over to you? So you can call them and, 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 and list their property. I can even tell them, hey, I work with a, a reputable realtor in the area and I can be your referral and gave them your contact info, right? And then you can reach out to them. You see that? That is the exchange of value. You provide them with leads that they can call and list in exchange. They're going to provide you with access to the MOS, hopefully. Or another one is money talks, bullshit walk. What if I pay for your fees? What is your monthly cost to have your license? I'll pay for it just to get access to the MLS. So let's just say that none of those things work because these this agent's like, hey, you know what? I, I'm not going to do that. But if you talk to enough agent, there will be one that will be flexible, that's that willing to work with you, especially if you can build up that relationship. But let's just say that they're like, nope, you can't find anybody. Then have them send you expired listing, but not just any expired listing. You want to go, you want them to send you anything that is 17, seven to eight years ago. Because seven to eight years ago, property are way cheaper than what it is today. Don't you agree? So why would you want to go with property that are just expired three days ago? Right? So you want to get everything that's expired seven to eight months ago. You guys, expired listing is a gold mine. Majority of the investors don't even target expired listing. Okay. And I will I will explain to you why it's such a gold mine and why people don't target them. So you want to go seven to eight years back when property are a lot cheaper than what it is today. And so let me give you an example. So I remember when I called the seller, they they list their property for $175,000. Okay, three. I think it's like, uh, this is when I first started, three years ago, okay? They listed for 175. That property is worth 250 now. But guess what they want? They want the price that they listed three years ago, which is the 175. Because think about this. If they list the property three years ago for 175 and it didn't sell, what makes you think that the seller think that they can now get 250 for the property? They don't even know that the property has to appreciate. And even if they do, they don't know how much it's to uh, appreciate for because they're not in the game like we are every single day. So we know. So already, as you can see, there's already instant equity that's already built into the negotiation. So it's not like you have to start at 250 to get them to come down. You start at 175 and you already have that spread already built in. And now you just negotiate from 175 which means you might only have to get them to come down, you know, I don't know, 30 to 40K instead of getting them to come down to 100 or 150K. Make sense? Dude, expire, it's gold mine. And when you call them and when you're able to position yourself, like, listen, I'm not an agent. I'm an investor. We're interested in buying your property. We're interested in making you a fair, no risk, no obligation cash offer. Like all of that is music to the ear. We're buying the property as is, music to the ear, because most realtor wants them to do the repair. They list the property. You don't have to pay any realtor commission. So they went through all of that where they listed with an agent and the agents probably name out all the costs that they have to pay. The realtor commission, the closing costs, they have to do this repair, fix that up, this up, that up. So they're tired of that. And if you can come in and tell them, hey, we're going to make you a free, no risk, no obligation cash offer. We're buying the property as is. We can get this thing closed in a timely manner. There's no real estate commission you have to pay. We cover all the closing costs and all the fees. You pick the date, we close on it. Boom. 
Like all of that is music to the ear. And that's so when they understand that, they'll be like, well, I can go a little bit lower. I can take less because of all these benefits that you guys are providing me, the hassle-free, the quick closing, right? So when you're able to, when you reach the right seller at the right time and you're able to pitch them all of that, when they have already gone through the whole like traditional way and it didn't work, I promise you, your chance of getting that property locked up in a contract is way higher than you just calling some random seller that you don't even know if they're gonna, they have a property they wanna sell or not. Makes sense? So expired listing is gold, gold mine. So, uh, okay, let me take a few questions and then we're gonna keep on rocking and rolling. How can I start with little money? Honestly, I'm so tired of these comments. When, when there's a will, there will be a way. When you want success as bad as you wanna breathe, my friend, only then can you succeed. Here in America, I don't understand how can you guys say, I, you either say you're broke or you don't have any money. Well, go find the money. Now with expired listing, it doesn't cost you any money. What it costs you is building relationship with the, with the realtor to get access to the MOS. But, but I'm tired of these comments because you can really go and do Uber on the weekend and make an extra few hundred bucks. And you can take that few hundred dollars to invest into your marketing. But instead, majority of you like to sit around, whine, complain like a little bitch about how you're not having any money. There are things in your house that you can sell to get instant cash. Like there are things that you can do instantly to get instant money, but you choose not to. And majority of you, if, if, if you make excuses more than you make money, I promise you, you're going to be stuck at the J-O, the B for the rest of your life. Now, BBQ world, I'm not calling you out, man, because these comments, dude, I see it all the time. So I'm just saying this in general. Because I just don't understand. You're speaking to a high school dropout. I came to America at the, at the age of nine. Grew up in a mud hut. I used to catch frogs for dinner. And for those of you, dude, it does taste like chicken <laughs> a little bit better. But for me, man, throughout my whole entire life, you're either making excuses or you're making money. But the people that are making money, they don't have time to make excuses. So our, our VA, I call expired listing every day. Most people want to put it on the market. Any specific, any specific you are looking for, yes, dude. So you got to look at property that are like older, right? They built in like, I would say like 1980s. So you got to filter them out, 1980s or older. And they need to have somewhat of a distress, right? Fix your upper, like, right? Fix your upper or it hasn't been renovated. Um, so those, I, I typically target expired listing, probably that are older, 1980s or so. But it's the numbers game. RVA, if I ask you, you're saying I call expired listing every day and everybody wants to put it on the market. I can tell you right now, you probably haven't made enough call. Because if I were to ask you, how many calls do you make a day? How many sellers do you talk to? Majority of you don't talk to enough people. Period. Um, so any other questions? But expire listing or gold mine. Now, for those of you, if you're new into the game, you're like, Kong, I don't even know where to start, right? Then here, check this out. Go to WTMclass.com. It's a 15-minute free training that I created for you. Well, I'll show you how to get into the game. But you got to understand the knowledge is free, but the hustle is so separately the info's there the choice is yours uh what other question you guys got hey Kong, how can i uh, comps vacant land so when it comes to vacant land man i would look at the tax assessed value look at the tax assessed value if you can get it at or lower probably lower than the tax assessed value then there's a deal to be made but with vacant land, man, there's just so much things to know about vacant land that if I were you, if I were starting out, I wouldn't focus on vacant land. Stick with single family, dude. Easier to understand. A lot of people will buy it. Vacant land, you got to know what can you put on that piece of vacant land? Single family. So basically, you got to know the zoning. 
And then utilities, is all the utility there? Or does the builder have to bring the utility to the streets to actually build, right? Can you subdivide the land? So there's a lot of things you got, you know, you need to know more. And the type of buyers that buys vacant land are typically builder or developer. So your, your pool of buyers are smaller. And the reason I know all of this, because dude, when I first started, I was just everywhere. I was looking at vacant land. I was trying to wholesale apartment, commercial. And then I realized, shit, I'm just wasting my time chasing shiny objects. I need to focus on one thing and master it, which is single family. And once you know how to do that, and then you can graduate and move on to the next thing. Yo, Kong, when you have the contract signed, who do you give it to and who pays you? So Wolf, the lone wolf, you send it to a local title company and you get escrow open. That's what you do. Title company is the one that's going to pay you. So once the transaction is closed, title company pays you. Make sense? Hey, Kong. Um, so I got about another four minutes or so. Hey, Kong, what do you think about market over 500k ARV home price? Should I try to, should I try, should I try virtual or stay in this expensive market? Portland. Dude, port, um, so my whole thing is um, as long as she, as long as the price between 100 to 500k, dude, you should be, that market is fine. I don't want to see you get into like the 800k to like the million dollar home. But 100 to 500k, dude, is a good market. I think Portland, I think Portland is a good market. Uh, what other, uh, any other question you guys got? Any other questions? This is, God, not enough people on here to ask questions. Um, to, to, to. Paul, prop streams. Yeah, man. So for those of you, if you don't know like where to pull the list, uh, of distressed property, property, property has the number one data. You can check out my link right below, uh, my field link with them. You get a seven days free trial and, uh, they're great. I think a lot of investors use them. What do you do when you can't make a down payment? I don't know what you mean by down payment. When you wholesale, there is no down payment. You mean the earnest money deposit? If you're talking about the earnest, if you're talking about the earnest money deposit, man, dude, it can be as little as ten dollars. And if you don't have ten dollars, dude, then you probably don't have what it takes, bro. But there's no down payment. You're not buying the property. You're not fixing the property up. That's why. That's why I love wholesaling. Do you call the do not call us? If I accidentally call the do not call us, yes. The worst case is they scream at you and say, hey, do not call me. I'm on the blah, blah, blah. Say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just giving the list to call. I apologize. But yes, I will never call you again. Boom. That's it. You just apologize. But don't overthink. Oh, my God. They're not. Are, are they on the do not call us? Should I call them? Should I not? Dude, just, just, just do it. Diego said, how do I get a contract virtually through email? DocuSign. You got it, bro. You, you answer your own question. Good job, dude. My two virtual assistants call 600 numbers a day, but answer rate is like 20. And most are not interested or wrong number. More volume. You need more volume. So each of my VA call about 1,000 phone number a day. And there's three of them that's calling right now as I'm on this live with you. Uh, do, 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 do. What's your favorite marketing channel? So we typically just do uh, SMS and straight up cold calling. So SMS and cold calling. For those of you, you're new into the game. Here's things that you don't want to do. Is you don't want to do SEO. SEO, dude, this is a long, long term play. Because typically you do SEO, you hire somebody, it costs you a lot of money, and you want to start ranking up on Google. This takes between six months to one year to actually get results, to actually get a return on your investment. The quickest, the fastest way to get in front of a seller is text message or cold calling. It's the cheapest way. 
And then the next thing is direct mail. Direct mail costs a lot, man. 50 cents. Sorry, I put $50. 50 cents a postcard, or it's going to cost you a dollar per postcard or per letter. I'm sorry, 50 cents per postcard or a dollar per letter. So uh, SEO, dude, direct mail is very expensive if you're new into the game. Uh, t -t 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 -t. You, love, you love the new jacket? I do. I do. I love it. Uh, is this fail list the same? Yes, Stefan, fail listing and expire listing are the same. So if you're on prop streams, it's probably fail listing. If you talk to a realtor, it's expire listing. Uh, no, no, no. What does contract needs lawyer when wholesaling? So Charles, here's what I'm going to do for you, man. If you need the wholesaling contract, why don't you just text me? At 1206208 with the word contract. I'll send it you, I'll send you a copy completed for free. For those of you, if you like, if you need help build, grow, scale, and automate your wholesaling business, whether you're new trying to close your first deal, or maybe you're an experienced investor, you have done a couple of deals already, but you're still working in your business instead of on your business. So you need to put like a team system process and automation in place. And you want to work with me, my team, and see how we can help you with that. Then uh, go to coachwithkong.com, book a call with my team, and uh, we can hop on the phone and see how we can help you out. Now, it's not for everybody, okay? But this is for those of you, I just want to put it out there. For those of you who say, Kong, this is my next step I want to make. Um, what other question you guys got in here? Would you recommend PPC for someone that's starting off with capital? Um, I think PPC is good, but honestly, I would just go ahead and start with cold calling and SMS. Like if I have capital, if I was to start all over again, that's probably the, the two things that I would still do. And it's SMS and just straight up cold calling. And if you're, if you've already done a few deals already, your next step that you need to do is you need to hire a lead manager. That's your next step, which is your cold caller, okay? And this is gonna eliminate, it's gonna take away six to eight hours per day of your time. Because we all know that cold calling sucks. Cause you gotta dig through all the no's to find one yes. So they're gonna spend six to eight hours cold calling for you to get you that one yes. And that one yes, they, that's when they set the appointment for you to call back. So you now become the purchase manager. And this is how you start removing yourself, right, away from working in the business and then uh, rather on the business. So you need to start removing yourself from the day-to-day -day task. And the next position you need to hire is what's called an admin. Dude, we, we're, we're going into like a whole nother realm, realm here. So here's what I'm going to do. God, okay. Let me check my phone real quick. Oh, shoot. Lon, call me. Hello? I'm on a live on YouTube, Lon. Okay, bye. So the boss called me. <laughs> Almost got in trouble. So I need to, I got about seven more minutes. That's the most I can stretch. But comment in the chat and let me know if you've already done some deals and you're now just looking to grow and scale your business. Um. So let me see here. Jay Williams, um, how much is your wholesale to million academy? Um, Jay, the best thing to do is just book a call with my team, man, and they can go over all the thing with you, like what's included in the program. Because it's honestly, it's not for everyone. Like I want someone that's driven, that's motivated, that's committed, that's willing to put in the W O R the K. I don't want this to be like the get rich quick where you're gonna waste your money because it's not a get rich quick. Okay. But if you're willing to commit and do and put in the work, but you just need the support, the guidance, the training, the tool, and the resource, this five months will be the best month. will be the best five months of your life, because you do. Once you sign up, we're gonna you're gonna hit the ground and we're gonna start running. There's no there's there's no time to meditate. There's no rah rah rah. So I was just talking to someone that reached out to me on on Instagram. She spent eight thousand dollars to go to this. I would say it's a seminar. And she's like, I didn't learn anything because there's too much raw, 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 raw. Dude, there's, there's no raw, raw in my academy. It's like, dude, you're going to hit the ground and freaking running. 
Like on day one, I expect you to freaking start working already. There, there is no time. Like because that's just how I am. <laughs> like I'm just not a talker. I'm just a doer. I, 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 I just want to get that money, man. Just show me. All right. Um, plug. If you had to choose between cold calling and text blast, what would you choose? Mm, good one. So honestly, if you have the capital to do it, I would do SMS. Cause you know why? Because you can send out a thousand text message or even 10,000 text message with one push of a button and you're just playing a fishing game. So when you have money to leverage, my friend, it's a lot easier because all you do is you're just fishing. You're just throwing out the net and waiting for the fish to, to catch bait. So sorry, my hair. So if I, if I, if I have capital to start, I would just do SMS and just wait for my phone to ring. That's pretty much it. It, it becomes a fishing game. So I hope that answered your question. I'm new and have been watching you for a while now. How do I cold call with confidence? Dude, such a good question. I know a lot of you, you have trouble calling because fear. You're afraid. Number one is you don't know what to say. Number two is you don't know what the seller's going to say. Number three is you're afraid of rejection, right? Seller cussing at you, swearing at you, hang up the phone on you. So here's my advice to you, man. Is that number one is don't set expectation. The reason why a lot of you are afraid to call or when you're on the phone with the seller and you get so nervous because expectation, like you want to like, oh my God, I need to lock the seller up because I need this deal. I'm dying, right? So don't set expectation. Do expect to get a no. So lower your expectation, expect to get a no, expect them to cuss at you. So now you have no expectation, right? And then just call them, expect, it, expect them to cuss at you, yell at you, scream at you. And I promise you, that's going to help you overcome the fear. So one, not have no, no expectation. And two is call them and talk to them like if you were to talk to a friend or a family. See how you can help them out. Not like, oh, I need to get this property under contract. Listen, what do they need? And if they are a motivated seller, man, they're actually pretty easy to talk to. It's the one that's not easy to talk to. It's the one that's unmotivated. So just like next, move on, move on, move on. Okay? So I hope that helps, bro. Do, 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 do. So don't have expectation. Okay, we already uh, did that one. What list do you call except expire? Dude, there's so many lists. It just depends on your budget, man. But there's just so many lists. I mean, you know, vacant, vacant property. Okay. Tax lien. Right. That's a good, that's another list, but do you want to make sure that any list that you call, just make sure that they have at least 40%, I would say 30 to 40% in equity or more. And another one is good is absent, absentee owners. So whether they in the States or out of States, typically the out of States. So I think they're very good uh, to target, especially in today's those, there's a lot of tired landlord, right? There's a lot of eviction going on right now. And these landlords just want to get out because there's these renter that went through the whole COVID not paying rent and they're still stuck in there. <laughs> they still don't want to pay rent. So there's a lot of evictions, a lot of tire landlords or, you know, absentee owner. It's a good list to target. Okay. So we got two more minutes or one more minute. Any other question you guys got? This is your time, baby. Uh, da, 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 da. So once again, hit your boy King Kong up on. Twitter, IG, Thread, and TikTok at Real King Kong. Uh, any other question you guys got? Let me grab a drink of water real quick. So let me go through. Oh, yeah. And I want to, I want to let you guys know that confidence is built over time. Let me tell you a quick story. So when I was in high school, I have extreme acne, right? I, I, I did not have the confidence that I have today. I used to get bullied in high school, right? They, 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 they make fun of the way I, I look, the way that I talk, my height. 
right? And my teacher used to tell me that, you know, I need to graduate. If not, I'm not going to make it in life. Well, guess what? Just a couple months ago, I took baby Rory back to my old high school to see how my teacher and the bully is doing. <laughs> and you guys already know what up. But, um, you know, I, I didn't have the confidence that I have today. So confidence just like success. It doesn't happen overnight, bro, but it happens over time. You just got to stack one brick on top of another. And how you do it, dude, is by having small wins. Confident don't come from losing, but it comes from winning, man. So which means that don't set too big of a goal that you cannot hit, but set small goals every single day that you can hit, bro. Like today, just make a commitment. Hey, I'm going to call I'm gonna call 20 seller or 20 phone number. Or today, I'm going to talk to at least three potential seller. And then over time, dude, and if you set that and you hit it, you hit it, you hit it, over time, you're confident. Like you do what you say you're going to do. And eventually, bro, you're going to start building up that confidence. And once you close your first deal, I promise you, dude, that confidence, bro, is freaking good. It's going to skyrocket because now it's not just a fantasy, but now you build up the belief that you now is reality, but you can really do this and you can do it again and again and again and again. Diego said, how do I get paper converted to DocuSign? Yeah, dude, so all you need to do is download that paper contract, download it into a PDF, and then you just take that PDF and upload it onto DocuSign. So you see this, everything like this is everything that we actually helped you, guide you right through inside of the uh, My Wholesale to Million Academy. But when you have a question like this, we kind of guide you through it and show you, train you exactly how to do everything. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so going to be the last question here. When coming up with your offer, what is the base percentage to go for? Another great question. So a lot of you don't don't really still don't understand that here's the wholesaling formula. So it's ARV minus 30% minus repair, okay, minus your fee, whatever it is you want to make. That's your A. M O your max offer to the seller. Okay. So ARV, so this can change, but this is this comes down to is how much do you know your market and how much do you know your buyer? Because some buyer, dude, I mean some market buyer would, would go as high as 20% off. Like they only need 20% discount. So if the ARV is a hundred thousand and if you go with the 30% off. That would put you at third at 70k. Let's just say it needs 10,000 repair. You minus 10k. That puts you at 60,000. And let's say you want to make 10k on the deal. That means your offer to the seller has to be 50,000. Because once you got under contract for 50, you're going to sell it to the buyer for 60. But here is where the number change. Let's just say that you know your market. It's a very hot market. The investor they don't need the 30% discount. They're they they are cool. They're cool if they make 20%. So now you can offer the seller more. So we do the exact same thing, ARV. Now this time it's only 20%. So which means now you're at 80,000, right? 10,000 repair, now you're at 70. And if you may want to make 10K, now you can offer the seller as high as 60,000. So your chance of getting this private in a contract is way higher because you understand your market and you understand your buyer. Make sense? Okay. That's all I got. That's all the time I got. I appreciate each and every single one of you guys that are here with me. Once again, I do hope that all the information that all the information that I share was able to add some kind of value to you today. And if it does, all I ask for is boom, smash that thumbs up. For those of you who's new to the channel, be sure to boom, smash that subscribe button. Until next time, take care and let's go get this money. Later, guys.